we're getting closer, I'm getting more nervous. I do not like it. I think this is as far as I'm gonna go. <laughs> Okay, now it is time to dig into this lamb yum. Keep going! I'm gonna catch you! Hi, Dan. We are Sammy and Tommy, and we just spent the last few months traveling to some amazing places in Southeast Asia. We were ready for some cooler weather, so we decided to change course and fly to a different region in the world. We started our Balkans road trip in Croatia. I'm super psyched just to have our own space, our own car. We visited the ancient ruins in Split, explored the charming port town of Bol, and walked the walls in the picturesque old city of Dubrovnik. Our last two days were spent in Mostar, Bosnia. We loved our time in this beautiful little town, walking the cobblestone streets and taking in the sights. While we were in Mostar, we drove to the nearby Kravis waterfalls. All right, how cool is this? Had lunch overlooking a stunning dervish monastery and hiked up to an old abandoned fortress with spectacular views of the Bosnian countryside. Good morning everyone. So today Tommy and I are heading out for a road trip. We are leaving Mostar today and we are heading to Sarajevo. Guys, it feels like we're driving on walking streets out of this town. It doesn't feel right that we're on these roads. All right, so we just got a little gas station breakfast, a couple croissants, some coffee, and an OJ. Cheers. Our first stop was the small town of Yablonica. It is unbelievable countryside here in Bosnia. We looked up the best lamb restaurant here. So we're gonna try this one first. The view looks amazing. All right, so we just got our seat outside. This view is so cool. It's so nice. And the lamb looks really good. You can see it outside, they're roasting it. Fresh off the spit. Cheers, babe. Okay, now it is time to dig into this lamb yum. I'm a big fan of lamb, so I have high expectations. It is superb. It is so good. Oh my God, it has so much flavor. Oh, I can't wait for you to try it. It might be the best lamb I've ever had. Oops. Can't waste it. All right, Lammy's. Lammy. Lammy's <laughs> first bite of Sammy. It lives up to the hype. Mm-hmm. Mm, very salty and tender. Mm, just melt in your mouth. It's so good. Yeah, cooked to perfection. After our delicious meal, we went to a memorial site called the Bridge on the Naretva. This bridge is dedicated to a famous World War II battle between the Yugoslav partisans and the Axis forces. The remains of the destroyed bridge are a symbol of wartime difficulties and sacrifice. There is a museum on site to hear more about this impressive war story. We saw the two bridges, we had some delicious lamb for lunch. Now it's time to head to Sarajevo. First toll. Clear. All the old tunnels we were going through look so ancient and cobblestone. And then this one's like so fancy with lights. Lit up, yeah. Although we did just pay a toll to come on this road, so <laughs> that's probably why. Hello. Hello. Thank you, sir. Have a good day. Sarajevo is the capital and largest city of Bosnia and Herzegovina. On our first day, we drove up Mount Trapevic. So today, Tommy and I are out 
and exploring Sarajevo. We're trying to hit two places before the weather gets bad. The first one we are going to go do is an abandoned observatory tower. And then the second one is the abandoned bobsled track that was used in the Olympics in 1984. Yep. We were following Google Maps searching for an abandoned Olympic bobsled track when we got distracted by the cutest flock of sheep. Oh, the rain makes them dirty. All right, so we just made it to the bobsled track. So, not only was this used in the Winter Olympics, but nearly 10 years after, it was used in the Bosnian Wars by the Bosnian Serbs. It was used as an artillery base, and you can see that it's covered with bullet holes. And now it's used as an art gallery for graffiti artists. So it's a really cool place for tourists like us to come and explore. <laughs> The nature out here is actually kind of unexpected too. It's so pretty. Just finished exploring the bobsled luge. I learned that word. And now we're gonna go find the observatory tower. My Google map said it should be through those woods behind me, but I have no idea. All right, we found it. Wow, that is so cool. It's a little creepy to me. You can really see the bolt holes on this guy. We are gonna head into Old Town and go get some lunch, and then hopefully we can make our afternoon walking tour. We're kind of short on time, but we're gonna try to get down there. Now it's time to go meet up for our walking tour. I think we're gonna make it. it starts at 2.45, it's like 2.30. working on my military time. The tour starts at 3.45, not 2.45. So we're gonna go grab a coffee. Sarajevo offers several free walking tours of the city. Since the siege of Sarajevo was so recent and such a crucial moment in world history, we decided what better way to learn about it than through the mouths of the locals who lived through it. We chose the walking tour called War Scars and New Times. Our tour guide was amazing. She shared her own personal experiences with us and discussed life during the war. The city of Sarajevo is occupied for three years and eight months, the longest running siege in modern history. 
there was a day in 1993 in July when the city of Sarajevo was hit by 3,777 shells. Well, hit with. So it's nearly 4,000. So you can imagine how that sounds like. It's impossible to describe it. This walking tour was full of information that was extremely heartbreaking and very eye-opening. One mortar shell found the way to this market. It fell down here, as you see. It was very lethal. 67 people died immediately. 150 were wounded, and this was the biggest massacre we had in Sarajevo. This war tour covers many important sites like Sniper Alley, Sarajevo Roses, the Children Memorial, and Markle Market. Someone dropped a bucket of red paint. If you see it, it means that it's a monument called Sarajevo Rose, and it's a place where a bomb fell and actually killed someone. It was difficult to hear about their recent history and post-war recovery challenges, but also so inspiring. Even during the siege of Sarajevo, people in this city never stopped living together, however different they may be. Because this is the thing, Army on the Hills was the Serb army, yes. But you had many Serbs who lived in the city, who lived and died like everyone else did. You have many Croats, many Bosniaks. So in, in a weird way, that life together saved humanity of citizens of Sarajevo because people never had the sense of collective guilt, like blaming all the Serbs or blaming all the Serbia. It was never like that. I believe that we will have no uh, traces of war maybe in the next 10 years. We were so impressed by this tour and would definitely recommend it when visiting the city. It's not as sad as it seems, but it's our duty to remember. That's why we keep places like this and we build memorials like that one. All right, so we just finished our walking tour. Our guide was she, amazing. She was so good in all of her stories and I think she was between 6 and 11 years old during the war time, so she you know, had a good like recollection of everything. It hit on a personal note for sure. It was very sad, but she was the best tour guide we've had yet. Yeah. We'll, we'll leave the link to the website. We'll see you guys in the morning. Out on the town on our own. <laughs> okay, so today we got a little bit of a late start, but we are heading out to explore the old town in Sarajevo. It smells good. So we just arrived in Pigeon Square. Oh I can't God. pronounce the actual name, but you can tell by all the people around and all the pigeons. <laughs> We're getting closer, I'm getting more nervous. I <laughs> do not like it. I think this is as far as I'm gonna go. <laughs> behind us was built in 1753 and it's the symbol of Sarajevo. It said that if you drink from it, you will return to the city again. That's like ice cold and fresh. Really? It's nice. All right, so we just ordered the original Bosnian coffee. It looks a little different. <laughs> and we also ordered baklava and what did you order? Some chocolate cake looking thing. It looks bomb though. So, dessert time. It's very strong. I think I'll add a little bit of sugar to it. It's good though. It's just very strong. Okay, so this spot behind me is really cool. It's supposed to be the meeting of the two cultures as the dividing line in the city. So if you look the east way, it's the Ottoman Islamic side of the city. And then if you look towards the west, is the Austro-Hungarian Christian side of the city. We are done checking the old city for a little bit. We're gonna take a little break. 
head to get some beers. Okay, I just found this menu. It's on a telephone string. And it's the me drink menus written on tarot cards. Oh, that's kind of creepy. That's cool. This, is, this place is so interesting. Tell me more. Bar is so cool and interesting. Such a cool place. I've never been to a bar or restaurant like this. So eclectic. Look at those big words. Thank you. I'll look that one up myself. <laughs> All right, you guys. So it just started raining. So I think we're gonna call it a day. All right, time to go. Which means old bridge in English. And this is the exact the blah. Hula. Let's go again. The old town of old town? No. Starry. I don't know. Ten years later, it was used in the Sarajevo siege in the Bosnian Warbs. Warbs. <laughs> back it up. Back, back, back it up. <laughs> this is so funny. Anyway, uh, Jamal. Okay. I got a hype man. Papa. You ready, baby? Sleep in the car, go down 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 the car. Not everything is sad. We're going to see something lovely. It's one of my favorite things in the city. War food is never good, obviously. People cannot eat good in war, it's war. You get help, you get food but it's mostly things that you can preserve for a long time. If you don't have any electricity, it doesn't make sense to have fresh food because you cannot preserve it. So Yuan would give us powdery food and tin cans mostly. And we ate a lot of things. Some things were kind of nice, some things were good, but we ate also a lot of the, the Second World War leftovers, those can, span, you know, that canned meat. Mm -hmm. I don't know, it's not that bad. I mean, it's a bit salty, but it's not that bad. But nothing is as bad as this golden can. So it was golden, uh, EU flag on it, and it said canned beef. So you open that can. I swear, you don't know what to do. Take a fork, spoon, or just drink it because it's mostly jello, meat jello, intestines, horrible. Very pink jiggles on the plate. But we got it all the time. But human beings are very basic. If you're hungry, everything is good enough. We loved it. We really thought it was great. Only when the war ended, we realized, wait a minute, <laughs> that was not that great. When you have the good food back, uh, there was this artist who said, remember that can, that particular one, the one that we all remember. So why don't we just say a proper thank you? So he builds a huge statue of that tin can to say passive aggressive thank you to UN. <laughs> so <laughs> it's not supposed to be offensive. This is about 10 years old. Five years later, after this was built, UN actually opened up this next to it. So it's behind it. You get, I don't want to point fingers, but you can see it over there. <laughs> so you can see the sign of Nations. So if UN built a building and then we put this in front of it, that would be so horrible. We didn't do that. So the monument is older than that building and UN office. So I don't think they care at all. But I don't know. It's kind of satisfying sometimes that they can see it. So it's a very sorry even thank you, you know. Um, when it's thank you but like thanks so 